Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to show you guys how to change a crankcase filter um, on our way home from Wisconsin. We uh, had the code come up on the dash for crankcase pressure. So it was uh, kind of, I thought it was going to be a bigger problem. Uh, that's code that came up when my motor initially blew the last time. So, but the truck's been running fine. Um, come to find out i guess these filters have to be changed once a year so anyway i'm going to show you guys how to change that and uh, clean the housing and check the sensor and uh yeah we'll get at it here stay tuned <laughs> so basically in here by the fan you're gonna have this it's this is the housing so you're gonna take all these little uh bolts out which are 5 16 and you want to gently take them out um these don't come out they stay inside the uh, housing so you just take this off to replace the filter and then you'll see there's the sensor here so it's you're gonna have a bolt or a screw there you can pop that out gently clean it out or pop it out clean it um then you want to clean the housing so just use a clean rag and some brake clean there might be some chunks and debris um get all that out i used uh i already cleaned this one but i used uh q-tips and a rag so you can use brake clean on that. So this was the old filter. You'll see it was pretty dirty. Uh, might, you might not be able to see it with the camera, but there's little chunks of stuff here. It just looks like gook. So it's, it's normal, um, but this one swore out. You definitely want to replace them at least once a year and they don't cost much. So, um, and it's easy to do. It's probably a 10, 15 minute job. So we're going to put the new filter in. There's really no way to mess it up. Just the way the shape of it. Um, these grooves here. You just drop it in from the top. And there's little seals on it. You'll notice when you're doing it. So just make sure it's all pushed on. Make sure there's no dirt in the filter. gonna put your cover back on here <coughs> and you just start putting everything back together and same way it came apart like i said these uh little bolts here they won't uh they won't come out so just i would recommend hand starting all of them just because you don't want to have to replace the whole housing if you uh cross thread anything Just tightening all these up. This is just a plastic housing, so you don't want to over tighten anything. But yeah, guys, we're going to get this tightened up and uh, fire the truck up and let everything run through. 
But yeah, on our way home from Wisconsin, the light kept coming up. So basically what it was doing is I was, if the truck was shut off, I would turn the truck on, the code would come up. So what I would do is shut the truck back off again, turn it back on, it reset it. So then the code was gone. Um, and then I drove for five, six, seven hours before I had stopped again. So, and then the light never came back on. So that tells me like there wasn't a major problem. It was just filter need to be done. Um, like I said to you guys, you might've seen in previous videos in the past of mine that uh, this was the main code that came up when my motor initially started going um, the last time. So I was pretty nervous when it came up, but anyway yeah we're gonna finish this up and start up the truck and uh, uh hopefully you guys found this video helpful i know uh when i was in the situation the last time where i had to figure out where this filter and sensor was um i had watched uh videos on how to replace it so like i said guys uh just make sure all, everything's cleaned out proper and uh and um It'll just make everything uh, flow easier and uh, you don't need dirt or anything getting in that fresh filter. And uh, uh, as far as switching them, um, once a year, you guys should be good. And they don't cost a lot, so it's worth it. So, anyways, until next time, stay tuned, like, subscribe, drop comments. And don't forget, keep the shiny side up. Keep on trucking.